Barry, Brianna, and Kevin. And today we're going to show you how you can buy your coffee, your lunch, or even your next laptop with Phony Money. Uh, Phony Money is a software web services package that replaces uh, a customer's credit card with his or her iPhone for secure in-store transactions. And we do this by allowing iPhone owners to use their iPhones to make in-store credit card transactions and by allowing stores to accept those payments. Uh, now we've all seen over the past you know, 10 or so years that there's been this trend of merging personal devices. So first everyone carried around their cell phones, their MP3 players, their uh, cameras, PDAs, and now all you really need is your iPhone. So we think that the next logical step is to merge your wallet with your iPhone. And to motivate this, uh, we thought of uh, two specific needs. Uh, first, merchants need to be able to sell their products to consumers, even when consumers either have forgotten their wallets or don't feel like carrying their wallets around. And also, uh, consumers need to be able to purchase goods, even if they've forgotten their wallets or, if, or maybe it's inconvenient to carry them. So for example, if you go running, um, you might bring your iPhone with you so that you can listen to music and get important phone calls. Uh, if you have phony money, then uh, if you get thirsty, you can still go to the store and buy water. Uh, now, just a brief overview at a high level of our system. Our system has three main subcomponents. Uh, first, there's the iPhone application, which we designed uh, using Apple's proprietary uh, iPhone SDK. And this is where a customer would interact with our system. Next, we have the register application, and uh, this is designed in Java and will uh, integrate with existing point of sale software and also existing credit card charging software. And this is where a store or a, a cashier will interact with our system. And finally, we have a backend server, which basically stores uh, some basic login information. It does not store uh, credit cards or anything like that. You can think of it more as a gateway. Uh, it connects the iPhone application with the register application. And we also have an auxiliary website that just performs basic administrative tasks such as setting up an account or deactivating an account. Uh, now Barry will go into a little bit more depth about our backend server. So this is a very high level diagram of the interaction between iPhones and registers. Uh, to facilitate communication, we're going to be using the open standard extensible messaging and presence protocol, or XMPP. It's a XML-based messaging protocol that you're actually probably pretty familiar with. Uh, it's the underlying foundation of many instant messaging uh, protocols. Uh, Google Talk uses it. Uh, AOL Instant Messenger uses their own version that's very similar. Uh, we chose XMPP because of its uh, proven uh, scalability and enterprise use. Uh, it comes with many features right out of the box, such as uh, secure socket layer encryption. Um, it's a very intuitive solution communication problem. Uh, as you can see, iPhones and register applications are clients to the XMPP server. So to communicate, they log into the service just as you would log into, say, a long semester in chat with others. Uh, you'll notice that there are <coughs> three components there, the register name component, the offline message component, and register component component. These are custom extensions to the XMPP service that we've written. So in this model, we have uh, basically a simulated client-to-client -client communication where the XMPP server simply forwards messages from you to the And I will give to Amy who will show you a little bit of the uh, transaction process. Um, okay, so now we'll take you step by step through the ideal case of a transaction. Um, as you can see, we have all three components of our system. Note that the credit card gateway is not part of our system. What happens is when a merchant charges a credit card, the credit card information is forwarded to a credit card gateway associated with the merchant's account, and then the credit card gateway feeds directly to the credit card company and charges the credit card. So first, the merchant um, requests a register code from the register code component. A register code is a dynamically uh, generated four-character code. When we, we're figuring out how we're going to connect the iPhone with the register, um, we wanted to come up with a solution that would minimize any hardware added to the system. So this unique register code um, is going to be the handshake between the merchant and the iPhone. So the service sends back a register code to the merchant and the cashier 
user gives that registry code to the customer, who then enters it into their iPhone. The iPhone sends the registry code to the server and um, requests the registrar's name. A registered name is kind of like the username for your instant messaging client. It's an ID that identifies the register. So it's a register name component that is back the register name to the iPhone, and now the iPhone and merchant can communicate with each other. The iPhone requests the order total from the merchant, which then checks with the um, server whether the person who is requesting the information is indeed associated with the register code for that register. The server comes back with confirmation that the customer is okay, so the merchant goes ahead and sends the order total to the iPhone. The iPhone customer chooses their credit card and accepts the payment, and the credit card information is forwarded to the merchant, who then sends the credit card information to the credit card gateway, which goes ahead and charges the credit card. The gateway sends back a receipt to the register, which then forwards that receipt to the iPhone, and the iPhone sends back the confirmation to the register saying, I indeed did get the receipt so that there's no ambiguity whether anything got lost along the way. So now we're going to show you a short video of this ideal transaction. Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Brianna. And we are going to be taking you through a phony money transaction today. I will be working with the iPhone application on your right. And I'll take you through the registry application on the left side of the screen. So, I'm at the store now and I'm getting ready to check out. I open up my iPhone phony money application and select my user account, which brings me to the main menu that you see now on the screen. I go ahead and click make a payment which now allows me to log in with my password. When I do this, I will log into the backend XMPP server, which facilitates all of the messages between the customer and the register. So I go ahead and click Submit, and now I'm logged in. So when Kevin gets to the register and wants to make a payment using his phony money application, I'm going to click the Order Entry button on the main menu screen. And you can see a register code has appeared in red in the upper right hand corner. Uh, this code was uh, received from the XMPP <coughs> server. And Kevin will enter that into the iPhone application in order to uh, locate the register that he's trying to make. So I go ahead and do that now. And click the submit button. And you'll notice on the register application screen that that code has grayed out and the status uh, shows us the customer is connected successfully. Uh, now the register application and the iPhone can directly communicate for the remainder of the transaction. So now I'm going to enter the order total using the numeric keypad and click the submit but order button to send that to Kevin's iPhone. And I can do this before he enters the register code and connects to the register application or after. It doesn't matter what order that's done in. So we see that because I had already connected to the register, I receive a confirmation <coughs> message as soon as Brianna clicks that submit button. And it uh, lets me know uh, where I'm sending my money and how much I'm sending them. And whether ask me whether I want to accept or decline a payment. Of course, I click accept. And now I need to choose my card. I only have one credit card stored in my iPhone right now, so I select my Visa card here. You see that the payment is processing. And now you can see on both the register application screen and the iPhone screen that the transaction was successfully completed. Uh, both of us have received uh, receipt information about uh, the transaction that was completed and the information will be stored locally on the register application and also locally on the iPhone application. Okay, thank you very much. So now that you've seen a little bit about our our kind of how it works, and we can talk a little bit about the security <coughs> that we've um, the credit card information is stored only on the customer's iPhone. It's not stored anywhere else on their server or anything like that. Um, and it's encrypted on the phone using a 